the Sports Vote Campaign Podcast. Invest in sports. It began in the 70s, episode one. So I'm not one to play games or hide things, so I'm going to put this out right up front. If you don't believe in the God of Israel, go ahead and stop listening to this now, because it's just going to sound like gibberish. So why am I telling this story? First, I want to say that many of the things that I'm going to put out here I have not never told anybody, uh, not any friends, not any family, parents, no one. Um, I'm doing it because I'm keeping a promise. You say keeping a promise. I'm keeping a promise that I made about seven years ago to God. That's going to come later. First, I'll start with <clears throat> my origins. Um, again, the story is not about me. I'm not trying to boast or brag. I hope that what I say here is going to have a positive impact out there on anybody who listens and show them through my story and my words that God can be trusted and God is real. That's my point. So I shouldn't be here. Um, I should have been wiped out a long time ago in a variety of different ways, car accidents and all that. Again, those are other parts of the story. But back to the beginning. I uh, grew up in Louisiana, uh, in central Louisiana. I was born in uh, Alexandria and I lived in uh, Pineville and then in a little town called LeCount. Uh, that's my that's my origin story. Um, I was always uh, a bit ahead of things. Um, I can remember being taught how to read and understanding how to read when I was very young, like three or four years old. But you know, you only see the world through your own eyes. You you can't view the world through somebody else's eyes. Uh, so you just assume everybody sees the same things you see and understands the same things you understand. So I'm going to keep these episodes short. I'm going to start with the very beginning of what I think is the story that leads to the present time and why I am where I am and why I'm doing what I'm doing, which I could have never imagined. Um, you know, I never even aimed for as a child. Um, I, I can remember one uh, particular event I went to. Somebody asked me, this question, which really struck me, and I remember it to this day, um, did you pick this or did this pick you? And I didn't have to even think twice about it. Uh, this picked me without a question, uh, not the other way around. So um, the very beginning of the story, when I was um, about f- maybe five or six years old, maybe even a little younger than that, some that would have been in the middle of the 1970s. Uh, the earliest memory that I have, I can remember the tumult over Richard Nixon. I was very young when that was going on, but I do remember it. Um, so I began having, I would take baths at night by myself. Um, again, I'm probably about five years old, best guess. And I remember having these very, very, very strong, I mean, it wasn't, I wouldn't say it was a voice in my, you know, out of thin air, or I didn't see somebody in the room or anything, but it was a very, very strong impression. I would say like your own voice speaking to you, that if that uh, makes any sense, that I had a very important job to do. And, um, you know, I'm five. I mean, what, what do I know about jobs and, and what do I know about important, the word important, you know, <laughs> what's important to a five-year-old? Um, and, and it kept happening and I, I began to like ask questions back again in my head. I, you know, communicating in my head, well, what, what is this job? You'll find out. And the answer I would get back was you'll find out when you're 30 years old. And this, this struck terror in me. I, I wasn't excited about it. It wasn't something that I, um, look forward to. In fact, I counted the years thinking, well, okay, I'm five. That's 25 years from now. Um, That's a good long time. So I'm not going to worry about that. There was no sense of excitement. There was actually a sense of dread over the whatever this was that was coming. In my 30th year, I was not looking forward to it. So 
as Steve Jobs said in, uh, I believe his his famous speech at Stanford, you don't put the pieces together looking forward, you put the pieces together looking backwards. That is absolutely what has happened here. So I'm going to keep these short. That's chapter one. I'll I'll explain more uh, in the next episode in two weeks. Thank you for listening.